The rumors that the songs were collected existed, but scholars believed that this collection was destroyed and never survived the war. Turns out it did survive the war. Today we realize that these songs are the first eyewitness uh, testimonies by Jews of what was happening on the eve of the Holocaust. They're not beautiful songs crafted by the best songwriters of that era. They're songs written by ordinary people living their lives, experiencing the war, experiencing Hitler and Stalin and all of that, and uh, somehow maintaining, continuing to live a life and writing in their own voices. So he sang 10 or 11 songs on this project. He is a fantastic musician who got uh, the sound exactly like it should be, not sentimental, you know what I mean? Like it was exactly the sound of Soviet Jews living through what they lived through. Anna had a very clear understanding of what she wanted to do. She didn't want to hire necessarily North American klezmer musicians. She wanted them to have a connection to the Soviet Union. Alexander Sebastian, genius accordionist. Every single one of the musicians had something personal about this. I think it was important to record the songs in the language, in the tone, in the spirit in which they were written. <laughs> One of the things about this uh, project is that the majority of the songs were written, were created by women. So it was really important to think of a female singer. And then I remembered many years ago, I had this wonderful student in my class named Sophie Millman. Oi find me oi find me heruf zu wen It didn't take a lot of convincing because the material was so compelling and told told the story of my grandparents and what they went through in the war When Sophie came aboard this project got a completely new meaning a new life That's the Rubaro verse Mm Kazakhstan Kazakhstan and this song, Kazakhstan, talks about the whole Europe is after Jews. We're refugees everywhere. We're not welcome anywhere. And now we ended up in this weird place, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> talks about the nature and the roughness of it and the extreme aspects of it, but it really, it's talking about the internal struggle. It's the most obvious connection that I have to the project. I, you know, it immediately clicked for me what it must have been like for her in her early teens. And it was very cool to be able to do it in a, in music, singing in the voices of people living at the time, not people now looking back, but literally living it in the moment, telling those stories in a simple, um, simple, very basic way. Some of the most violent songs in the collection were written by women. So these women, they're sitting somewhere in Central Asia and they imagine, they fantasize about these guys who go and kill as many enemy soldiers as they could and they motivate them to do that. He 
He bashed those fascists without a care, not a bit of respect. The mutilated bodies fell near the half-dead, covering the earth. One thing that we didn't expect to see in this collection, that so much of it is humorous. And Purim Gifts for Hitler is one of those songs. It showed that Jews were laughing in the circumstances where we can't imagine people laugh. It's very life-affirming and humorous. And it shows us that this is how human beings make sense through things that should never happen to them, you know, through humor. Ah, Miss Rowell, ah, 